and we are back with the third segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast, presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this third segment, we are going to be looking at the starting lineup for Team USA, my opinions on the starting lineup, what I think should happen for the starting lineup, and, you know, making a new starting lineup due to Kawhi Leonard not being on the roster anymore. Because if you guys remember from my previous segment, I would have wanted Kawhi Leonard starting at the shooting guard or at the small forward, depending on where you're going to put him, and would have much rather liked to see him in the starting lineup as opposed to the starting lineup that Team USA came out with. And, you know, now that he's not on the team, I got to make a whole new starting lineup because (laughs) for reasons. Now, the United States team, they came out with a very odd starting lineup to start out. Now, they started Steph Curry, obviously, then they started Devin Booker and then put Drew Holiday at the small forward. I don't understand why they started, you know, three guards in the starting lineup as opposed to having, you know, two guards, two forwards, and a center. I thought that was very, very odd. But at the same time, I do understand that this team, like the team that they were up against, you know, Canada, they also started, they actually started with four guards on the on the roster because you know again this team was lacking height and so i feel like this was sort of a lineup in response to the canadian lineup and how they were running the team so i think that's why the starting lineup was steph curry devin booker drew holiday lebron and then joel Embiid. so if this is the lineup that they wanted to you know come out with in response to the canadian lineup like to try and match up with them rather well then i don't really have a problem with that whatsoever but if i were to if i were to go into this game i would have put steph curry at the one then instead of having devin booker in there i would have put someone like anthony edwards in there but I do understand if you would want Anthony Edwards to come off the bench and sort of bring that impact because he was very impactful coming off the bench for the United States. So maybe being that igniter off the bench is the role that would best fit him and help USA, you know, come out with a lot of victories. And I wouldn't put Drew Holiday in at the small forward. Instead, I would have put Jason Tatum in there at the small forward because while he is really good on offense, he's also a very good defender as well, which is one of the things that made the Boston Celtics so deadly in the regular season and in the playoffs. It was the fact that they had several players that were good on offense, as well as having several players that were good on defense, because Drew Holiday, Derek White, Jalen Brown, and Jason Tatum are very competent defenders. And the only, honestly, the, the only problem that I had with the starting lineup was Joel Embiid in the starting lineup. Like, again, I don't think Joel Embiid in the starting lineup was a good idea. And you could see it from the way that he played in the starting lineup. Like, he was trying to just, you know, get players in the post. He was trying to sort of find find a bucket or, you know, in his case, try and find a way to get a foul call. And I just really didn't like his style when, you know, paired up with the rest of the players on the roster and it wasn't like he was bringing tremendous value for the team and again he ended up fouling out in the third quarter of this game so I would have much rather seen Anthony Davis in the starting lineup as opposed to Joel Embiid in the starting lineup I would much rather Joel Embiid just not play at all if I'm being quite honest with you or if he is going to play at least pair him up with a good group that isn't you know the scoring kind of group like maybe a lineup like Tyrese Halliburton and either Anthony Edwards and Devin Booker and like it's really difficult to make a starting lineup for Joel Embiid because there's so many scorers on the team I feel like Joel Embiid should just not try and be a scorer for Team USA like that's just how I feel I mean just off of the lineups and just off of like how they've how he was playing again I don't think they should put him in that starting lineup having Anthony Davis there he was bringing tremendous value for the team much more value than Joel Embiid and again it's really difficult to make a starting lineup with all of these guys especially since Kevin Durant wasn't playing so sort of I I feel like Devin uh, Kevin Durant when he does go into the game he's going to be primarily like a scorer for the team so again I feel like he should be in the starting lineup as well if I really 
if I really wanted to make a real starting lineup, like this would be my official starting lineup for Team USA. It would be Steph Curry, and then in the shooting guard would be Anthony Edwards. Then in the small forward would be Kevin Durant. Then in the power, then in the power forward would be LeBron. And then at the center, it would be Anthony Davis. I feel like this lineup would work very, very well for Team USA. As we know, LeBron is an extremely unselfish basketball player, so he doesn't really have to be the scorer for the team. And on top of that, he does have the chemistry with Anthony Davis. And, you know, he wouldn't mind giving the ball to someone like Anthony Edwards or someone like Kevin Durant to create a shot for themselves. And then, you know, you have some of the scorers come off the bench. You have Tyrese Halliburton come off the bench along with Devin Booker and even Jason Tatum, honestly. Like, it's between Jason Tatum and Anthony Edwards in the starting lineup for me. I mean, personally, I would much rather see Anthony Edwards just because of how he performed. But if he's going to be that igniter off the bench, then I wouldn't mind seeing Jason Tatum in that starting lineup as opposed to Anthony Edwards. Like, I would, the, really, the dream lineup for me would be LeBron at point guard, Steph Curry at shooting guard running off the ball, then having Ke Jason Tatum at the small forward, Kevin Durant at the power forward, as well as Anthony Davis at the center. Because one of the things that that lineup would have is the ability to switch on almost every single defender, right? Like, the only liability on the defense would be Steph Curry because Jason Tatum, LeBron, Kevin Durant, and Anthony Davis, they're roughly around the exact same height. So they wouldn't have any difficulties in switching on any of the other players. And, you know, having Anthony Edwards in, you know, either the small forward paired up with someone like Drew Holiday or Derek White or even, you know, Tyrese Halliburton, being that defender on the team would be incredibly valuable. But again managing this lineup and managing the amount of minutes that all of these players can play is going to be really really difficult especially since one of the rules in FIBA basketball is that each quarter is 10 minutes long so not everyone is going to get all that many minutes on or no, they're not going to get as many minutes on Team USA as it is and now when you combine the fact that the the quarters are a combined or two minutes shorter than what is expected in the NBA. So in total, that would be um, eight minutes that aren't going to be played, like, you know, in the entirety of the game, because, you know, two times four, that's going to be eight. So it's going to be eight total minutes that is that is completely different and completely excluded from the Olympic basketball world and the Olympic basketball scene. So it's a little bit difficult to manage this roster and sort of who should be paired up with who, when should you switch out some of these players, and when you shouldn't switch out some of these players. And a lot of these players, they might not even see more than... A lot of them, since since Kevin Durant wasn't in the game and he was injured, a lot of players were able to experience more minutes in the, in the exhibition match, and almost everybody played well over 10 minutes, and... <laughs> The player that ended up playing the least amount of minutes was Joel Embiid because, again, he fouled out. And once he fouled out, I mean, like, I, I fully expected Team USA to just blow Canada out of the water because, again, Joel Embiid just doesn't bring that value to the team. And he's not as valuable as Anthony Edwards on Team USA or even Bam, for that matter. I mean, Bam, he played 21 minutes. He didn't really play that well offensively, but he was he did have a very good box plus minus in this game. He had 14, which was the third highest box plus minus of anyone on Team USA. So again, that is value, and that is something that these players that came off the bench, they brought that to the team. Anthony Edwards, he brought tremendous value. Tyrese Halliburton, he also brought tremendous value, despite not being the scorer, you know, Tyrese Halliburton wasn't being a scorer. He was very good on the defensive side, getting four steals, and he was also making sure that everyone else was being involved in the offense, which is what you need from the from Team USA. So maybe if LeBron is going to sit out, you put Tyrese Halliburton in that lineup just to, you know, make sure that everyone gets their touches because Tyrese is a very unselfish player, and he was being incredibly unselfish in this game. So... That's all I have for the third segment. So now we will go ahead and go into the fourth segment where, excuse me, I talk about Caitlin Clark in the WNBA. She broke another record 
for the WNBA. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about that in the fourth segment right after this short break. So be sure to stay tuned. For the best and latest podcasts available anywhere, go to the podcast app on your cell phone and type in GSMC to access free content-rich podcasts on health and wellness, book reviews, sports, entertainment, relationships, social media, movies, technology, finance, and even weird news. Subscribe and download the GSMC Podcast Network's family of shows available everywhere podcasts are found. 